Hello, I'm George Gluck, the Green Party candidate for Maryland's 6th Congressional District, and I would like to address myself to the voters in District 6. Today I'm going to ask you to vote for a Democrat on November 4th, but not the candidate that has Democrat appearing after his name on the ballot. In 1968, I became eligible to register and vote for the first time. I recall that a, Republic, uh, that, pardon me, that a Democratic Congress and President had in 1964 and 65 passed and signed into law civil rights, voting rights, and anti-poverty legislation. So I felt very comfortable registering as a member of the Democratic Party and voting for Democratic candidates then and for years afterward. In our predominantly two-party system, Republicans typically attempt to reach the voter just to the left of the median in the political spectrum, and Democrats attempt to reach the voter just to the right of the median. In 1968, that median voter hadn't moved too far from where she was when Republican Dwight D. Eisenhower was president in 1960. Since then, she has gradually moved further and further to the right. The Democratic Party had a choice of two ways to respond. It could have tried to increase its base and keep the median voter where she was, or adopt a more conservative platform and move right along with the Republican Party. In 1985, the Democratic Leadership Council was formed to do the latter. Despite their move to the right, I continued to vote for Democrats, donate, donating both money and time to Governor Clinton's presidential campaign in 1992. But when he signed the North Atlantic Free Trade, Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, a bill passed by a Democratic Congress, I could no longer retain my relationship with the Democratic Party. In 1996, I started looking around and quickly rediscovered the party I, I joined in 1968 in the form of the Green Party. For me, the 2014 Green Party is the 1968 Democratic Party. So on November 4th, when you vote for the candidate to represent you, please vote for the 1965 Democrat, the one with Green Party appearing after his name on the ballot. And what is likely to happen if you elect me to, to represent you in Congress? I will ask to sit with the Progressive Caucus. I will vote for, endorse, and introduce some bills that our present congressman won't, and vote against some that he would vote for. My hope is that, at this turbulent time, this would suffice for you to cast your vote for me. If it isn't, please consider this. You hold in your hand a flask that contains two chemicals that you know should react, but there's no response. What is missing? What is missing is a catalyst. I assure you that if you, the voters of District 6, elect the first Green Party member to the House of Representatives, that act alone will be the catalyst that causes a reaction and changes to be made. First, on the, November, on the night of November 4th, the electronic media will shout the fact that Maryland's 6th District has joined countries like Switzerland, who in 1979 elected a Green to Parliament, and 29 countries and the European Parliament, which in October 2013 had 309 Green Party members who held national legislative seats. On the morning of November 5th, the print media will do the same. More importantly, the other 534 members of the United States Congress will note this historic fact and react to it. This reaction is sure to help the 6th District and the state of Maryland. Please vote for me so Maryland can proudly place a Green Party member in Congress before some district in California does.